just going to start on the bottom door for the southern entrance to the tunnel and going to find some wood. Uh, I've had to use the last piece of plywood I've got, a metre lengths. See those bits there in the middle of those doors? Um, that's nice and wide. This time I've had to cut it in half because it's the last bit. Out of all the odds and ends I've got, I haven't got anything that's nice and thick. You know, like this. It, it won't wobble about. Nice and thick plywood. And it's the last bit I've got, which is a metre long. Um, so I've had to cut it in half. One, one bit for each door. Uh, the drill, by the way, my Bosch uh, drill screwdriver, I've just had to change the battery. So it's been working all day, screwing all these bits in around the edges. And it's actually made these two doors this morning. And I've just had to change it. So it's worked for, I don't know, four or five hours, six hours, four or five hours. And the battery wasn't totally dead, but I've changed it. It's got some more oomph. Be on charge tonight. Right. So that's that bit in, so I'm just going to find some plastic to cover it now. Yeah, I thought I'd better just check the plastic that's left over. Um, that in there is too small for these doors. So uh, I've put both doors together, a bit of a gap, so I can bend a bit in. The, that's the bottom of the bottom door. Yeah, well, at least there's enough. There'll be overlap on some and not on others. Okay. End of day five. Time to call it a day. There's the top door. Uh, it's all ready for little battens to uh, hold the plastic on. Uh, that one is finished. Just needs some screws grinding off. Screws are a bit long here. Can you see them sticking out a bit? Grind them off and uh, it's in place this is remember this is going to be fastened from the outside finish this off tomorrow uh, forecast rain in the morning so we're okay we can work inside i've got plenty of wood cut look to trim up and um, what because it's it's dry in here now <laughs> then what we've got to do is tidy this up um i'm going to dig a trench round to bury the plastic, hold it in place, stop it flapping about so much and then we can start using it, clear all the work tools out, rake the floor, make it tidy and uh, then plan out what we're going to do in here. Oh Ruth's got some idea about us growing petit pois and things now. I know we're going to be doing tomatoes and peppers and those chilli things. Uh, so we're going to do peas, are we, as well? Oh, and uh, yeah, I don't think we need to do courgettes in here. They do well enough outside. But I think you can do courgettes a bit earlier if you do them in here. Uh, yesterday I planted the, I sow, sowed the tomato seed. And uh, the lady who lives down the road has given Ruth some duck eggs today. says, don't forget. The moon is ascending, the moon is climbing up, and now is the time to sow your seeds. Here's Mongo, confused now. You must sow your seeds when the moon is climbing, and they grow well. If you sow your seeds when the moon is descending, then they won't. <laughs> it's, it's quite true, it's quite true. So uh, we, and we'll go have a look and see what, else, what other seeds I've got to uh, sow, and we'll sow them tomorrow while the moon is climbing and it's got a bit more climbing to do yet. Okay, <clears throat> this is the beginning of day six and uh, I've been out here about half an hour and I finished the top door. So <clears throat> it's got lots of patent fastenings on it. This top door is an overlapping door and uh, still has a little bit of air through and it sits on those bits of block there. That's to stop it coming out. And a couple of bits of plywood at the top, stop it falling off, hold it in place. Another one here, it's quite a tight fit actually down the sides, so I'm quite pleased with that. So, uh, apart from the heavy work, digging out a 
few trenches here, look, and burying the plastic, I'm going to start tidying up. Um, got a bit of damp there, look, on the plywood from overnight rain. But only to be expected. All these bits of wood, they're all trash, you know, they're all offcuts that I bought in a bulk lot. And um, they've come in handy. So when they rot, you know, they can just be unscrewed. Another bit put there. No problem. Can soon fasten another bit. All this lot is screwed. So if there's, you know, it's only a very thin ply look. So if it rots, take it off, find another bit. And the main frame um, it will, will last quite a long time, but those plastic bits might well rot. But whatever, they're, they're there, they, they didn't cost much, pennies, and uh, they're doing the job. So I'm going to take it down and tidy up, move my tools out, and take it from there. Gosh, how long that was running. I think it's still switched on. Ah, that reminds me, I must get my bike finished. <laughs> That's one of my neighbours, or neighbour's elder son. Now then, I've got, here's the end, look, some uh, gadgets, uh, just holding it in place. Um, it's all been built as I've gone along, so it, it, the doors have had no particular design, they've just been made as I've gone along. And so... Maybe it's time just to have a little top, a little refresher and see how much it's cost so far. So I suppose the most expensive bits are these bits of timber round the side that, that I had in stock from another job. <coughs> the frame, um, there are one, two, three, four sections of polytunnel. And they cost me 80 euros second hand from my neighbour. 80 euros cash. The plastic came from a company in the next village, a small town, who specialise in all this kind of thing because this is the area of France where there are polytunnels and more polytunnels and even more polytunnels. This is a small one, um, dimension wise they've moved into another dimension totally now, big square ones, that you can get machines in. I mean, they're big and tall and you don't want to live next to them. <laughs> they're, they're big and ugly. I mean, these are bad enough if you're living next to a, a mass of these, you know, like 20 or 30 or, or the surrounding you. But anyway, the plastic cost me 80 euros from the firm down the road. So, so far that's 160 euros. Yes, 160. The timber to make the doors was from three four metre lengths of uh, decking that I had in stock. And all his other bits, the plywood, all the offcuts and the bits making the frame up, uh, holding the plastic in place, or just uh, plywood offcuts that I bought as a job lot, um, a whole huge pallet load for... I think it was 30 euros late last year. Uh, we used most of it for making models, as I've shown you, and uh, animals to the garden in plywood and things. So, nothing really for that. So, so far, there's four lengths of, four metre lengths of decking, and these bits of 4x2 or 2x2 two, two two down the sides, not very expensive. So, 180. I would think um, we're just a bit over 200 euros so far. Uh, about uh, 180 pounds. Yeah, that's not bad, is it? 180 pounds. Okay, I'm pleased with that. <laughs> now we're going to tidy up now, rake it all out, take all the dead rubbish out from the bonfire, and um, get the. Um, pieces of plastic downright out for the strawberries. Hello again. Today we've covered uh, a bit about the cost involved in our polytunnel. I suppose we're lucky that I've got some decent neighbours who sold us a bit of uh, his surplus gear and the fact that the company that supply all this plastic is only just down the road. Um, 
it surprised me actually um, when you read about how much polytunnels will cost you and all that kind of thing it surprised me how cheap it is so far so I wish I'd done it a few years ago you know I've been promising myself one of these for a long time and I've struggled on with growing tomatoes in the summer and it rains on them and spoils them and they get some sort of disease and so we're going to see how well they do inside this year oh by the way um, I mentioned earlier about having planted the tomatoes the seeds sown the seeds well I looked this morning and they're up so within a week mind you they're in a greenhouse and they're on a heated tray on a heated base you know it's a sand tray with um, um, a heating element in it and so they're on that and within six days they're sprouted and they're up you know they're about uh, where are we well, about that big <laughs> so far so they've grown this morning I, I've sown some pepper seeds some sweet peppers again in a little uh, thingamajig you know the cover on it, uh, that you put things in to make them grow I can never remember half these words propagator that's it okay so I've sown some of those uh, unfortunate for you folks by the time this is out the sun will be the moon the moon will be almost it's full moon this friday so um friday the 23rd of february is full moon so after that then your things will they'll grow but they grow a lot slower i mean six days and these tomatoes are mm. nearly two inches tall in six days that's pretty good they're F1 tomatoes, they're actually English seed that I had some friends bring for me or send for me um, because it's a seed that I like. I know it grows well over here too and uh, the F1s are less prone to disease of course. So there we are, that's covered a bit of the cost. Uh, next time we're going to show you some of the tools and we're installing the strawberry uh, tubes, the strawberry tubes, okay. So we'll see how those go. The strawberries, uh, Debbie was here, a friend from England, the other week, and we rooted out some strawberries that are in a tub from last year and the year before. Young, they, they look as if they could be all right. So we've put potted them up, put them in the greenhouse, and they've been there for, what, well, be a fortnight now. So they'll be going in the tubes. Um, I don't know how far we'll get on the next video, but... Um, we shall see. Things will start moving fairly quickly now. The garden is looking absolutely brilliant. I'll throw in some shots of the garden next time because there's some beautiful camellias and uh, hellebores and uh, wagelia, um, good daffodils, of course. Um, yeah, brilliant. Thanks for being with us. And don't forget, uh, we're going to um, share the link for the books and uh, Cracker Books publications. Thanks for being with us. If you like it, please give us a like and think about uh, subscribing to the channel. Show it to your friends. It helps us to grow the channel. That that's important in YouTube, the YouTube world. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for being with us. <laughs>